Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Mohit, for such a wonderful talk on uh, how open source has been, uh, you know, a core. And I've been personally witness to NITK. I have visited, and it has been a great show there. So Mohit has been uh, in, in the forefront in getting that done. Great. So uh, we move a little ahead. So I wanted to know that who all are interested? Who are interested in free software entrepreneurship? You know, uh, the uh, st okay, great, great, good to know that. Amazing, amazing, yeah. Thank you. So uh, I come from a company called DeepRoot Linux. And from last 23 years, we have been working exclusively on free software business. So when we talk about free software business, we talk about everything what we deploy at our customer places is going to be licensed under free software licensing. So which uh, And any packaging we do, any tools what we use, any setup what we do, there's no proprietary software at all. And uh, which we try to. Uh, enable it for the customer, saying that okay, there is no vendor lock-in. And uh, we have set up, you know, we work with defense, we work with corporates, we work with educational institutions. And uh, I'm here to give you a talk about our experience and our perspective of uh, what we have been doing in last uh, 20, 24 years. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so what is a free software business? Now, uh, you know, how do you sell something that is free? That is the first question. What something you know uh, occurs to our mind? You know, and if I'm uh, going to start off a business, okay, how is this going to make sense if I'm talking about selling something that is free? And the same applies to customers. When you actually go to a customer, or when you actually find an opportunity to work with someone, they will actually question, saying that okay, this is something free, and I know how is that uh, is going to be uh, sold to me again. Okay. So the argument here is that well, if you can charge for a bondage, lock-in, and a non-negotiable contracts, then you know surely someone is going to be there to pay for the freedom what you're going to bring in. So the core aspect of a free software business is not about the free of cost. It is about the freedom what you provide to a customer, right? And and I'm, I'm going to go a little de deeper later on that you know what is this freedom about, and how this is going to benefit uh, a customer and your business as well when you talk about the freedom aspect of free software. Okay, and free software alone doesn't suffice. Okay, uh, you have free software, which doesn't mean that it is going to provide a solution to a customer or a business or an enterprise. Okay, you need to actually build around a solution. You know, you might have to customize, you might have to provide a consulting services, and you might have to back it up with a very good support. And uh, in our last uh, 20 years of experience, we have experienced this that you know uh, the tools are there, but how you provide a business, there's a lot of angles to it. Uh, ultimately, it's a technology for a customer. And over a period of time, they're going to understand uh, the importance and the benefits of how free software is actually he helping them to be more transparent and providing a greater benefit. Okay, But to make it a complete solution, the other sales aspects are required for you to you know, derive a business. I'm not getting into, uh, given the limitation of the time, what we have, I'm not getting into you know, why is that you choose to be into business. I'm sure that you know, if you're getting into a business, you might have a certain idea that you know, why is that you would want to get into a business. You know, there's something, a problem that you need to solve. There is something that you know, what you always wanted to do, and but you're not actually finding a company where you're going to work. And uh, probably there is no other way than starting a business for something what you have been dreaming about. So I'm just leaving that uh, those questions aside. OK, I'm directly moving to the free software uh, business okay and what we understand by free software business it is an ethical combination of a business desire for profit and a customer's desire for freedom okay so what we talk about here is that we are using free software actually we are going to be in business then definitely it is a for profit business because we are going to build our services around the free software but at the same time we actually care a lot for customers desire for freedom and hence you know they are coming to you or you are actually they are convinced that you know you are going to provide them a solution which is going to be completely it's free software and it's going to give you a freedom of it okay and it's about the means and methods of s solving a problem, not which problem can be solved. So one of the most important thing uh, in free software business is the culture what you actually build uh, with a customer. Because there's a culture which is already defined. There is a process which is already being followed. And which might, you might not be able to agree, or the customers are not going to be agreeing to those principles. OK, so it's a culture. It's a way you're going to do a business. It is about a business practice, or it is about building right practices within the customer infrastructure. Because the mindset of free software is completely different than a proprietary software. 
And here is where we bring in a difference. Here we actually talk about how this business is going to benefit by being a structured way of thinking. So the thought process and the ethical business practices are going to be more important for a business to succeed in this particular thing. The next question is how do you monetize? Okay, so these are the various things what we talk about, how you're going to monetize using a free software. You actually can charge for your setup services, which involves your planning, consulting, support services, post-deployment, integration with other software, development services, and those are all the various types of services because something, what value addition you actually provide to a customer is actually your expertise and knowledge in this domain which is going to be not too different from any proprietary company because ultimately you're going to be working with uh, the tools uh, and these probably tools are free software tools but ultimately it's a technology you might work with the same web servers you might work with a similar databases you might you know uh, have this practices of running this software uh, based on uh, the same technologies what someone is doing but here you bring in a difference of providing this kind of services to the customers and then sell all the value aspects of the free software. So what is that you're going to talk to your customers when we talk about a free software business? We talk about no licensing cost. It's all about the setup. So once I do a setup at a customer place, we don't really care that you know how many licenses, how many users are going to use this particular tool. And this is one of the primary factors that a you know, lot of customers are going to ask you. Okay, I want to move out of my Gmail, I want to move out of my Office 365, and I'm being charged per license. I'm being charged for X money for per license and all that. So free software eliminates this particular problem. You are actually free to use the software, you are free to use a tool for unlimited users. Okay, that's the control, that's the freedom what you actually give it to a customer. The second thing is about the flexibility and customization. Since this is uh, the source code is available and you are able to work on any kind of a tool, any kind of integration, this is going to be very flexible. The security and transparency, well, this is something customers have varied uh, opinion because earlier open source was not considered to be a, you know secured and we have been working with defense organizations for example 20 years back also and there was a conception that you know free software is not that secured but that conception has changed now and over a period of time with a consistent effort uh, uh, from companies like us you know we have actually tried to advocate for free software and how something which is transparent and something that you can actually see a source code is more secured and transparent than compared to any property software where you don't get access to the source code okay so this has been our primary mantra in uh, talking to them and you know uh, enlightening customers about the transparency aspect because it is not only about the security it is also about the complete control what you want to give it to your customer okay and then we actually don't shy from you know exposing so many other uh, wide range of softwares which actually you can integrate right you can integrate you know suppose you're working on an IT infrastructure or you're working on a particular uh, application there are similar tools which are available you can just uh, make them available for them and it gives them the, a lot of flexibility the long-term viability uh, of course now this is something we in our last 20 years we haven't seen customers migrating to other softwares or other services that's because that they feel that you know this kind of setup is actually giving them a very good benefit okay so customers are not going to move away from you if you are actually going to provide them the right solutions the way it has to be you know set up and that gives them a very that gives you a very good competitive advantage compared to other things now coming to challenges okay to convince a customer to choose and adopt for solution could be difficult. And especially when it is compared to property software and its usage. Now, uh, we have experienced this before. Of course, the gap is a little less now, but when we entered this market and when we actually tried to sell them free software, it was very difficult because people have been used to using proprietary software. People have been used to using Windows laptops or Windows machines. People are used to having, uh, you know, the, the way they see technology is, is something what has been sold to them. So it is very difficult to get them out of the niche, but market is open now. So we need more companies where you know, they can actually come up and say, hey, these are the, these are the set of tools which is actually exactly going to work the same way what you have been using, right? So these challenges can be addressed, but the mindset issue of the customers is needs to be tapped. You need to actually talk to them re repeatedly about certain benefits, what you're going to get, and once you get them in your confidence, I think uh, they're, not, they're not going to leave you again, okay? Matching resources of a property software company might not be easy. Yes, I think most of us will agree that you know there are companies which have been funded madly, and uh, it's not that you know so open source companies are not being funded. They are also being funded now, which is a very good sign. And uh, but earlier it was a case where in property software we're getting funding from the companies. Okay, 
In all technical expertise and potential support limitations could affect your productivity, but over a period of time, you learn, you understand that this is how the business is learned. You, the customers understand you. Customer horizon actually increases because uh, you know the trust in you actually increases over a period of time, and also into the free software. The other perspective. Uh, so this is a question basically that would more po more uh, more people choose free software if there are more people selling uh, services. Now, this has been a typical problem what we have been facing. Now, when we go to some government organizations or when we go to some customers, we directly compete against the proprietary software, and uh, uh, which gives uh, them a little of uh, confusion that you know who else we can actually call into a similar domain. So there are not enough companies uh, who actually can come. Suppose we work with uh, a government institution or a government organization, and uh, we are the only company we are uh, trying to sell or trying to take head-on with the property company. Uh, so there, the question arises from a procurement team that you know why can't we have more companies, you know, who are going to participate and who are going to provide similar solutions. So if you look at the domains, uh, the industry, various industry verticals, various technology was uh, te technology verticals, the companies who are offering pure free software businesses are less. Now that is also one of the perspective what I'm trying to give, saying that you know if there are more companies, definitely you know uh, the, the market is going to be much more. Ex you know uh, they will be accepting your business. They will be accepting open source and free software. Okay, so would more people choose free software if there is an abundance of uh, free software skills? This is another thing what I'm talking about. The, if the businesses are built around free software, there are more people who will be you know building free software skills and open source skills, and that is actually going to help the business, the horizon of this business to grow further. The opportunity, yes. Okay, everyone needs software. Most people agree to, you know. See, most of the people, if you see working under, you know, non-negotiable contracts, and you are actually getting into vendor lock-in, you and we don't have any active marketing and sales at Deep Root Linux. But many of the times we are being approached, saying that, you know, okay, no, we are not able to use this particular software because it's an end of life. We are not able to use this virtualization solution because we are not able to scale it up. You know. The kind of requirements what we are getting is basically from a barrier which the property companies are actually putting it up, saying that okay, if you want to have something again, you know, you need to change the architecture, you need to, you cannot scale this particular model, you need to spend so much and things like that. Basically, it's not about the money; it is about the barrier what they're actually bringing in, and which which actually creates a problem for a customer. Now there is a small and medium enterprises which who have actually invested into a particular infrastructure, but they have grown two folds or three folds, but they are not able to understand that why certain things are being imposed, why certain why certain uh, you know uh, impositions are, impositions are being made. So this is where the opportunity lies. That you know when you talk about a free software, we are actually talking about a complete control. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, time is less. So, okay, promote the free software concept. You know, we talk about cost effective, we talk about no vendor lock-in because free software actually frees you uh, and uh, you get a complete freedom to run the infrastructure the way you want to, not that you know how the how the OEM or how the, how the vendor is going to tell you. So you are free to run the, uh, the infrastructure the way you want to use. Principles of free software, complete control, self-sustaining, access to source code. Okay, this we spoke about. Liberated hardware. Okay, we have a stall here, mostly harmless. You, can, you all have, I think, visited already. You know, and free hardware and open source hardware is also equally important for us to run free software. Okay, what business you might choose? You know, if you want to solve a problem, if you can spot a problem, you know, or organizations have, you can build products. You can actually provide services to solve them. Identify indif uh, industry sector and its uh, requirements and gaps. Build your own skills and uh, you know tailor uh, made your uh, uh, offering. Specialize. Build unique skills. This is again in great demand. If you are able to build unique skills, you know you can you'll be actually called for a solution. You can also enlist a proprietary software and hardware which you can replace. Okay. And enlist free software tools which are not fully solved. So this is one more opportunity what I'm talking about, that there are a lot of tools wherein you know, it has been left at 70%, 80%, 90%. And if you can actually master this uh, code and if you can provide services around those uh, tools, it is going to be a great offering to the entire free software world. Okay, Engage with community. Anything that you design and develop and release it under free software licensing gets you a great mileage, you know. People across the world are going to use your software. They're going to give you feedback. They're going to volunteer to work with you. I think that is something which is already known and it is in the spirit of free software. So that is something what I would encourage you all to do. 
uh, managing community can give you a very good uh, experience. I think uh, that is one of the best ways that you're going to work with uh, community. Okay. Uh, at DeepRoot Linux, we possess skills and you know the, we have found success by addressing customer requirements uh, very creatively. We are doing this past 23 years, but that is not enough. You know, so we want 1,000 more deep root companies to come in and pitch in and uh, you know uh, build a software around it. So these are the core uh, aspects what we work on: self-hosted solution, privacy and freedom, complete control, no tracking ever because tracking is one of the very important thing. I think if you have if you have the complete control, you are going to have your infrastructure with the zero tracking. So that is something what our customers are enabled with, and freedom from lock-in. Any questions? I think uh, the time is up. So if any questions are there, I'm there outside. You know, I would just like to sum up my approach as lock in customers with freedom because that is what is going to get you more customers and that is what is going to get you more business. Thank you so much. Uh, any questions? You all can meet me. I'm, I'm, I'm outside near mostly harmless uh, stall. Thank you.